This was the trip we made in 1960 to South Wales to do Aggie Aggie. We teamed up with Julia James, who was an expert on the cave, and travelled down in Terry Lamport's van. This is Griff up on Minland Gatuk. It was a fairly cold day, I seem to remember. And this is the view across from the tramway out over to um, Abergavenny. That's Julia herself eating an orange. And Bill Brooker there is uh, just getting changed. And about to throw Julia over the edge of the tramway. Um, Terry made a better job of it, by the look of it. We were a bit rough on the girls in those days. That's P. Greenfield. Uh, on the way back from what was, in fact, my longest caving trip ever, we had one of our se uh, one of several breakdowns with Terry's van, and, and we had a puncture, as you can see. Bill Brooker standing. Ah, Griff's having a go at Julia now. I guess that's for taking her on such a difficult trip. And of course we'd forgotten the jack, hadn't we? I quite like the old 1960 style of anoraks we're all wearing there. The next sequence was 1962, on a trip five of us made up to the Yorkshire Dales for the Bradford winch meet at Gaping Gill. These shots were taken fairly early in the morning before we went up in the back of, of the flying horseshoe at Clapham. In fact, I seem to have got up earlier than the rest of them. There's two of them still in their sleeping bags. Keith was always an early starter. He's got his primer stove going, ready to get breakfast. We used a lot of ex-army equipment in those days, like those two Dixies. Always well organised, Keith was. That's Dave King and John Thomas with a more army surplus stuff kit bag. We hired a minibus for 10 quid for that trip. And we set off fairly early up to uh, the top of Gaping Gill. This is um, coming through the paddock of the Flying Horseshoe. I'm seeing from we had a good singing session the night before and up through the village of Clapham where we parked the car and had to walk from there. Even on a bank holiday those little villages were fairly quiet in those days compared to now. But then no change in that we had to carry all our equipment up. And this is going up through the um, grounds where you have to pay sixpence for the gamekeeper and then a rest at um, what was then called Clapham Show Cave, which it now goes under the name of Inglebrook Cave. And there we are, slogging up Trail, Keir, Trail Gill with our kit. That's Terry at the back, in the light slacks. And this is the, the Bradford camp up at Gaping Gill. Only a few tents then in those days, nothing like the hordes that get up there now. And uh, the equ equipment at the shaft is a lot more was a lot more primitive than it is today. There's Terry coming up from the depths after a trip we did through from Bar Pot. And that scaffolding plank shoved underneath was all you had really to support you when you got off. And that's the winch, which again was a very slow compared with the modern equipment we have these days. In fact, it was quite good because it gave you a, a chance to look at the shaft on your way up. This is John following Terry up from the bottom. And being taken out by the Bradford man. That's a, a cross looking towards uh, Penny Ghent. The second trip of the day, or the weekend, um, we took off our kit at the bottom of Cell Gill and walked up to do Allen Pop. the trees of Alum, round Alum at the top there, and a view across at the uh, Ingle, um, Penny Ghent and the, the cast across the other 
side of the valley. Haven't really changed a lot up there, I don't think. And there's Keith looking down into the shaft, uh, the shaft of Alum, and you can just see the ledge on the right-hand side. And another view of the, the uh, Pothole entrance. So once again, we sat down on the craft and changed into our fairly basic kit. Um, and you see George Honey going into uh, Lower Longshore. Quite a few people just used to cave in old clothes in those days. We haven't even got gooses, I think, down for that trip. But we got down the dolly tubs onto the um, ledge at the bottom, and uh, I was able to get a photograph of the shaft from down below, just above the bridge. And that really is the typical Yorkshire flints and grikes. I was introduced to caving in 1958 by the youth club leader at Young Farnham Club, Peter Watt. We uh, paid 30 bob for a weekend at Priddy and we camped here at Mains Farm, or in the fields behind Mains Barn. Uh, we set up camp and after a quick meal we went off to do a, our first trips. This is one of the parties off to do Eastwater. And there's the old Wessex Eastwater hut. And Dave King going down to the entrance, ducking under the wire to Eastwater Swallet. Hasn't changed a lot, Eastwater actually, the tree's got a bit bigger. And this is Swildens without the blockhouse. And that's Terry Lamport going down it. And coming straight back out. This is a party of us having a meal afterwards, and that's Norman Tuck and the George Pointing of the Wessex. They were the two that really got us inter interested in joining the club. And of course, being boys, we had to take it out on the girls. So that's intent is always fun on your friends. Fairly basic uh, sanitary arrangements, but then we uh, were used to that sort of thing in those days. And the lad on the right there is John Thomas, and he, in fact, is still a Wessex member together with myself today. Happy days. This is the, the uh, campsite packed up, ready for the transport back. And we used to travel down in the back of this old uh, canvas back lorry by a chap from Ash called Jim Charm. Wouldn't be allowed now, of course. After we joined the Wessex, um, we got into more serious caving, and this is where we had a tr crack at Stoke Lane. We were talking there to uh, Farmer Stock, who kept the farm at the time. And this is John coming back after a very wet trip through the Stoke Lane stump. We were introduced to uh, caving in South Wales by a chap from the South Wales club called Les Hawes who lived in Fleet and Les arranged for us to go down and do a weekend when we did um, I think we did uh, OFD that day, yeah, he took us into OFD 1 these shots were taken around the old um, South Wales caving club hut uh, down near the Gwyn Arms and that is the old original caving club hut That's Terry Lamport. And that's Clive Jones with the pipe. Set about well, about to set off towards OFD. Bill Brooker in the green boiler suit. And this is the way down to the um, bottom entrance of OFD.